students. Very impressive. We all salute the senior class. You've got two minutes. Let's go. Come on. I want me calling the headmaster. Well, who's missing? Jane Haller. Anybody seen her? Come on, guys, let's go. Courtney, you seen Jane? She must have been up early. I went by her room this morning and she wasn't there. She skipped the breakfast review session for the AP Your Own Zone. Maybe she couldn't find a seat. <laughs> Very funny. So no one has seen Jane. Courtney, could you come here, please? Everyone snuck out for the prank, including Jane. Your son's her boyfriend. Why don't you ask him where she is? Well, my son is in my office. He'll be answering these same questions soon enough. Last night, um, was she drinking? Were you? Oh, come on, Court. She's your best friend. Where would she go? You've got to tell us. Okay. What would I find if I went over to Mac right now and searched your room? Hmm? We're days from graduating. You have to promise me nobody's getting in trouble for it's this. Fine. It's fine. You have my word. Let's just go find her. We've looked in the lower levels, the basement, in the attic. We've checked every single room in the entire building. Nobody has access here, and that's locked storage. Brett copied your master key and gave it to Jane. We use the room sometimes to hang out. You asked where she could be, so... Hey! It's all right. Jane, are you in there? Can you hear me? Open it. find anything. She may have destroyed it, knowing what she was going to do. But she was happy. Sometimes, when people make a decision to end their lives, it may seem that way. Wrong! Let me see her! Let me see her! Brett! Brett! No! Son! No! Come away! Come away! Come on! Come on, son! The Douglas Academy Alumni Silent Auction will conclude in five minutes. Doesn't anybody read anymore? Oh. Thank you. Look at you. You got hot. Please tell me that we made out at least once. Let me think. Oh. Oh, no. I told you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the headmaster of Douglas Academy. Can I have a Manhattan, Ian please? Ramsey. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Douglas Academy alumni, former students. I'm sorry. He's declined. The, uh, the beer, wine, and champagne's on the house. If you're Courtney Snow, I'm buying you a drink. Could you all welcome? The lady will have a Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Yes, she will. Thank you. And you are? Robin Miller, head of the English department. Honored that you are here. No, I tell everybody that my dead friend is the real reason why I chose to come and teach at Douglas. I'm a huge admirer of your work. Really? I take it you're still working on that second novel? I'm working on several of them. The trick is actually finishing one. <laughs> wow, I thought most of the staff was kind of pissed off about how they were portrayed. Well, maybe when the book first came out, but it has been a while. Yeah, uh, it has. Well, Douglas must be very lucky to have someone with such good taste hanging around. Have you ever considered teaching? No, 
Oh, you're practically a rock star to my students. They love the fact that you wrote a scandalous novel about Douglas. In case you're curious, this is the salary, plus the artist grant. You let me know by Monday? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, to sign this boot? Mr. Ramsey, you won my book. Mm. First edition classic by a former student of mine. I fought tooth and nail for this. <laughs> Would you personalize it? Of course. Thank you. Thanks. I see you've met our Ms. Miller. Well, actually, I just asked Miss Snow if she'd be interested in being our next artist in residence. What a wonderful idea. Do you mind if I take credit for it? Well, I'll let you two get caught up. Sorry about that. She's just a little overzealous. Oh, really? No need to apologize. Now, I know how difficult it would be for you to come back to Douglas. It's the same for Brett. Yeah. You know, I was kind of hoping he'd be here. Oh, he's, um... Well, um... It was very hard for him after... I'm sure you know he never even made it to Yale. All that work, he just had to let it go. I'm afraid we haven't spoken in some time. Yes, well, um, thank you for this. Uh, it's lovely. <coughs> it's a bit of an exaggeration, but very sweet. Thank you. I mean every word, Miss Ramsey. It's Ian. Ian. Okay. <sighs> so, artist in residence. You think I'd make a good teacher? I think you'd make a hell of a good teacher. Douglas, hey, 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 take it all the way, 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 way. take it all the way, way, way. Gina Klickna, my husband Larry and I are your downstairs neighbors. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. First aid jitters. Hi, no problem. Are you finding everything okay? Yeah, for the most part, I left some boxes in my room. Well, I teach Western Civ, and, and Larry teaches drawing. Larry's working on a graphic novel. Uh, he'd love to get some advice from a real writer. Yeah. It's, it's a, about the Salem witch hunts and other spooky stuff. Larry, tell her. She doesn't want to hear about that. Of course she does. 
Will you excuse me for a second? Ian, McAvoy? This is my fault. No, I should have mentioned that Courtney wouldn't want to stay at Mac. The thing is, teachers wait years to get a certain housing assignment. I could move somebody if I begged. Courtney, I'm so sorry. Sort of the last place I wanted to be. It'd be better when the girls get here. Yeah. Real unless I write it down first. Oh, just tell me already. <laughs> I am officially in love with Brett Ramsey. And he's officially in love with me. I thought Brett Ramsey's only true love is the Red Sox. Ha uh ha. -huh. He's not like that. He's smart and interesting. And he actually said it first. <laughs> so I said it back. And then I kissed him, and it felt like the most natural thing in the world. And I know you think I'm a cheese ball, <laughs> but it'll happen to you too. Oh. And when it does, you'll realize I'm not so crazy after all. Okay, if I fall in love, it is not gonna be here. See, that's the difference between you and me. I think I like to stay here forever. Oh, really? Oh, okay. What? Hey. Hi. What are you doing here? Um, I'm teaching, actually, at Douglas. <laughs> really? Wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> um. Hey, so I heard uh, you're the big deal writer now, huh? Yes, I'm a big deal. <laughs> no, actually, I kind of used up the 10 years I had to write a second novel, so now I'm a teacher who buys construction paper and cookies. The woman downstairs said that if I didn't have name tags for the girls' doors and cookies on the first night, I'd bring forth the apocalypse. <laughs> anyway, I kind of got to get back. Okay, yeah, uh, get the door for Thanks. You. you know, success is overrated, so. I am the only Douglas grad who committed the ultimate sin. I actually became a townie. <laughs> Is that so? Yep, got my own truck and everything. Oh. Ain't she a beaut? Mm. So, when you're not bow hunting? Or... <laughs> I, uh, I have this restoration carpentry business. Basically, I fix old homes for rich New Englanders. Hmm. Married, kid, significant other? Uh, got a Labrador. You? I got a therapist. <laughs> but I had to break it off. Long distance relationship and all that. Right, very complicated. Yes. So your dad's kind of amazing at this whole headmaster thing. You should come down, check him out in action. Yeah, well, becoming headmaster was always a big deal to him. Staying out of sight seems like the least they could do. But you grew up there. Yeah, you know, a lot of ghosts. I didn't realize there was more than one. Wow, you must have sold a lot of copies of that book. <laughs> you didn't happen to... Read it? Mm -hmm. no. That's okay, right? Yeah, sure. You probably wouldn't be speaking to me if you had. People seem to have a problem separating fact from fiction. Well, then I'll read it. It's not required. What else am I going to call you about, right? See, that would be me asking if it would be okay to get your number. I don't think that's such a good idea. Well, it's just to catch up, chat. We were friends once, right? Were we? Hey. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, scratch that. It totally didn't come out the way I meant it. Look, uh, here's me. Give me a call if you want, um, but uh, I'll understand if you don't. Bo, well, it was really good seeing you again. I'm glad you're doing so well. Yeah. <clears throat> it's good to see you, too. Take care. Yeah. You, uh, you always read the newspaper? You always is interested in talking to me? What? 
You're Jane's best friend. I'm trying to be nice. Never were before. That's because I didn't know you. After all, Jane thinks you're about the coolest person at Douglas, so... She did not say that. She did. Is Jane making you do this, trying to get us to be friends? No. <laughs> yes, okay. Don't tell her I told you. I won't. One other thing. Jane's in love with you, so don't hurt her, okay? Hurt her? I freaking worship her. Good. <laughs> My two favorite people in the whole world. Hey. Hey, you. See my crossword? Thanks. What, what, what do you mean you have an extra girl? Well, I've got 13 girls, and there's only 12 rooms. No, no, there, there are 13 rooms. No, there's 12 rooms. I lived on this floor myself for two years. Oh, but not since the renovation this summer. The renovation? Yeah, they converted a room at the end. It used to be storage. It's a room now. Oh. Okay, thanks. Um, Laurel, you must be... I'm Courtney. I'm a snow. It's nice to... This is uh, for you. I didn't mean to scare you. My parents are having breakfast at Mr. Ramsey's, so I thought I'd get an early start moving in. Are you okay? Yeah, you just... You look a lot like somebody I used to know. Oh, yeah? Who was she? She's my best friend. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Did do you want to come in? No, no, that's okay. I've got a lot to do. It was very nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Hi, uh, I'm Courtney Snow. Hi, I'm Jim McAvoy. This is my wife, Beth. And we're Laurel McAvoy's parents. Nice Good to, to meet, meet you. Courtney. McAvoy, really? Yes, the uh, <laughs> dorms were named after my grandfather. We've been a Douglas family for quite some time. Anything I can help you with? We just wanted to make sure that you knew about Laurel. What about her? Uh, well, Laurel's always had uh, problems adjusting here at Douglas. Uh, she tends to withdraw. This year could be a fresh start for her. You'll see to that, won't you? I'll do my very best. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you, Courtney. See nice you to again. meet you both. Take care. Bye. Okay, so I guess all of you know that the Wi-Fi shuts down at 11, and the headmaster reminds everybody to leave their cell phones in their rooms during school hours. <sighs> okay, look, I was... <laughs> I was gonna say this. I was one of you once. I lived in this hall for two years, so I kind of know where you're gonna hide all your contraband, and I know everything that you're thinking of doing before you do it, because I've done it already. So just think about that before you try anything shifty. Okay? Any questions? Um, I have a question. Okay. How much money does your family have to donate to get the big room? <laughs> okay, that's enough, Emery. Thank you. It's a fair question. No, it's not. You know it. See you guys tomorrow, okay? Get some rest. No, oh, take a cookie. It's hard enough being a McAvoy, living at McAvoy. I don't need you defending me just because my parents told you to. Okay, fair enough. Keep a secret? Emery's right. 
I asked my parents if they could get me the big room. I walked through the building during the renovation this summer. When I saw the room, I, I knew I needed to live there. I just like the room. Since this is an advanced course, I'm assuming you all already know the basics of writing. What I want you to do in here is to develop your own personal style, your voice. And that starts from writing you freely. You wrote My Dead Friend. Yeah, Sam, I did. Anybody read it? It's all about Douglas, right? Um, yeah. It's loosely based on my days here at Douglas. And no, I didn't mean to trash the place. Some girl really killed herself here, didn't she? Yeah, a girl I knew. Did she really leave behind some suicidal messed up journal? <sighs> no, that was made up for the book. Look, basically, my dead friend is about the things we leave behind after we die. You mean like ghosts? <laughs> Idiot. Not literally ghosts, but yeah, in a way. I mean, ghosts don't have to be one particular thing, right? It can be a bad dream that you can't shake or a memory that you just can't seem to let go of. Why didn't you call the memoir? Mm, because my life just wasn't that interesting. So basically, I made up a fictionalized tale of events where questions were answered, guilt was absolved, and suicides were forgiven. Turns out, shock. It was what people wanted to read. Okay, so enough about me. Let's talk about you today. I want you guys to write speeches. Speeches as if you're trying to incite a riot. Don't worry, it's not gonna affect your grade. I just wanna know you as people, as writers, so please, write from the heart. Make me wanna riot, make me wanna scream in the streets. Now, begin. I'll be reading them after class. I'm sitting here beside myself. I'm staring at the novels on my shelf. A million words in front of me But I can't find the one word that I need If I could be an open book I wouldn't be misunderstood Every word I left unspoken Is like another promise broken I gotta put it back Is there a problem? Uh, I'm a godfather of sorts. Oh, no, 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 no problem, really. It's just that she reminds me an awful lot of Jane Halloran. I see. Yeah, she looks just like her. Well, I, I think it's only natural that one of these kids would remind you of Jane, especially a girl that suffered from depression. Jane was never depressed. Well, I just think we never saw the signs. So. If you're concerned that Laurel may be headed down the same path, then I think we need to get her some professional help. Also, her parents have strong ties to Douglas. They may need to be brought in. You know, I really don't think it's at that point yet. You say she reminds you of Jane. Don't ignore your instincts. Be close to Laurel, so watch her. If anyone can prevent another tragedy, it's you. Okay, so next semester we'll sign up to live in Mac again. Totally, except I also applied for the Cambridge semester. Like Harvard Cambridge? Like England, that Cambridge. They hold one spot for a Douglas student every year and it's a huge honor if you get picked. And it'll only be gone for the second half of senior year. I'll be back before graduation. Court. I know you hate it here and <laughs> England would be great, but senior year, it'll be different. Different is, a whole semester about writing in a different country with new people. It's not like I'm abandoning you. You have Brett. <sighs> Laurel? 
Laurel. Hey, has anyone seen Laurel? <laughs> Anybody check Sam Skeefy's room? What? They're friends with benefits. I miss the friends part. <laughs> <laughs> or the benefit. The boys have their needs. Hey, it's so... not a fire alarm, so go back to your rooms, girls. Gina! 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 One of my girls is gone. Laurel McAvoy is gone. Find her. Now, are you gonna be okay? Yes. yes. Yes, sorry. I'm fine to get panic attacks and passing. You find her, you call us on this. Security's gonna take the lower field and ride into town. Best thing you can do right now is get out there and find her. Okay. Laurel? Laurel! I've got her. She's in the far quad. I got her. Right Laurel? Laurel! Laurel! I think I'd like to see you around there. Oh my god, Jane? What's going on? Jane? Jane! It's okay. 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 Meg. Checking MSS. Uh, Laurel? Got a minute? Uh, about the other night, I used to sleepwalk when I was a kid. I haven't done it in years. The doctors at the health center told me it's stress. Stress about you and Sam? Is he your boyfriend? He's not. Definitely not. You know, Laurel, you can talk to me. Sweetie, it's never a good idea to be with somebody if it has to be a secret. Trust me. Are we done? see you. Want to break some rules? Yeah. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Man, I don't even remember any of those old cheers. It's because you were way too busy being cheered at. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Seriously, how many uh, varsity teams were you on anyway? All of them. I only signed up for what my dad told me to. It was pathetic, really. And you, don't act like you weren't involved in a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, the lit mag and the radio show. Ah, the radio show. And I show. sucked at both of them. No. Jane was the only person who ever subscribed to that stupid magazine. <laughs> the kids used to call me up and yell at me while I was on the air because I wasn't playing enough Grateful Dead. I remember? remember? That. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> this is the Douglas I remember. You know, sitting in the dark, doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. I can't stop thinking about you. Stop. Stop. I'm sorry, it's late. I, uh, I gotta go. Wait. Uh, look, I'm sorry, just...
Hello. Courtney, can you hear me? What happened? Jane was here. I'm looking for Courtney Snow. You can wait over there, sir. Dr. Benson to radiology. Dr. Benson to radiology. Hey, Dad. Hi. So Courtney's fine. She's just got a, uh, a concussion. Is all she'll be all right. Thank goodness for that. We ran into each other uh, a few weeks ago in town, so that's what happened. Dr. McLean to the ER staff. Dr. McLean to the ER staff. Coffee? Uh, no, thanks. When did you stop taking your anti-anxiety medication? Mm, I don't know. I just sort of ran out and I thought, what the hell, try living outside the fog for a while. <laughs> You had a panic attack and you're in withdrawal from your meds. You can't just quit cold turkey like that with the consequences. That, the heat of the bonfire, and you said you consumed alcohol. I had a beer. Now you've got a concussion. Uh, any feelings of paranoia, anxiety, seeing, hearing things you can't explain? I'll put you back on your medication. Fog or no fog. Thanks. Hey. Hi. I'm fine, Ian. Thanks for coming. I slipped and hit my head. I'm, don't worry. Yeah. See if she gets home? Yeah. Yes, sir. Of course you will. I draw. Thanks. Yeah. I don't mean to pry, but someone in there said that you might be in withdrawal. Hey, well, since my medical history is on parade, yeah, I was on some anti-anxiety medication and I stopped. The reason I ask is because um, you told me that you saw Jane. Did I? Oh, my therapist would have field it with that one. So, did you see Jane? Of course not. Jane's dead. It's okay. you too. You know, whenever I uh, close my eyes or hear certain songs, it's like she's just around the corner. Anyway, I guess that's how I cope. I had my first real panic attack after we found Jane, and I guess how I've coped my whole adult life is to be on some sort of chemical substance prescribed or I thought maybe if I came back here, I'd get some answers, you know? Get some closure, maybe move on, but then they put me in Mac. You're living in Mac? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. I know. It's like some sort of sick joke, and there's this girl. I swear to God, she looks just like Jane. And I kind of started thinking, well, maybe she is Jane. I know. Crazy. I even looked up her birthday to make sure she wasn't Jane reincarnated. <laughs> totally nuts. I got it. Totally nuts. So here I am, completely losing it. And I don't know. You're here. And I just feel really confused. Girl. You have fun at the rally? You're kidding me, right? I saw you there. I've been here all night. You don't believe me? Ask Mr. Mathers. Tried to get me to play cards with him like three times.
see here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you research all this stuff, huh? <clears throat> well, Town of Douglas gave me some ideas. Do you know that it's considered a paranormal hotspot? It doesn't surprise me. Um, you know about the Douglas massacre? Yeah, yeah, it was like late 1700s, right? Sorry, during the French Indian Wars. Yeah, 63 men, women, and children were slaughtered at dawn. Town burned to the ground. After an event like that, you know, um, ghost stories have sprung up and around Douglas ever since. Larry, you ever see anything here that you just couldn't explain? No. Um, you, you know Carl Dickens, he used to work here. Yeah, yeah, he just retired. Back in the 80s, one day in the summer, he and his wife were here clearing out his faculty apartment. Down the hall, they see this kid with a buzz cut, not so different than a kid here, right? The kid goes down the hall and into one of the rooms. Now, Dickens is pissed because none of the students are supposed to be there during the summer at that time. So he goes down the hall into the room to confront the kid. And poof, the kid just disappears. Gone. But. But you think he saw a ghost? He believes he did. Although he admits he was pretty experimental in his Harvard days. But he thinks that all the chemicals affected his brain and they um, lifted the veil so that he could see things that other people couldn't, you know? Like, like ghosts. Hmm. Larry, how many mind altering substances do you think somebody would have to ingest before they saw the dead? I think you see what you want to see. Yeah. We tried to get her to stop. She's gone down to crazy town. Okay, thanks, Emery. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'll take it from here. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Talk to you? You think I'm a freak? I catch the way you stare at me, taking mental notes. Is this about Sam? I knew he was using me. <laughs> but I didn't care. Because <laughs> I thought it would change. Stood there all laughing at me! Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Was blondes. <laughs> stupid. It's okay. There's always one guy that makes us do really stupid things. Help you fix it back. He means so much to me. I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I think he's cheating on me. You know he would never do that. Wouldn't you talk to him for me? If you guys are friends, like, <laughs> he would be honest with you. I know it. Right? Please, please. <laughs> Do it, just, oh, just please do this for me. Please do this. Because he means so much to me. I don't know what I'd do without him. I'm gonna be okay. It's all gonna be okay. What's wrong? It's not you. It's not you. Okay. 
Brad, I need to talk to you. I don't understand why you're treating her like this. You know what? No, I don't. I wish you'd tell me. I'm in love with somebody else. We can't. Well, Jane's back. There is no such thing as possession or ghosts or anything like that, okay? I know it was her. She's trying to tell us something. I know it. I know it like I know I'm sitting here talking to you right now. So what is she trying to tell us exactly? I don't know. Maybe why she did it. Why she didn't leave a note. Maybe she knew about us. Brad, I think she was trying to punish us. Hey, hey. It's okay. It's okay. I miss her too. Yes, you are. She's the smart one. She's the pretty one. She can have any guy she wants, and she chose you. She can have any friend she wants, and she chose me. No. We're going to act like this never happened. If you care about me at all, promise me. I promise, but I don't. Cor Courtney, I don't love her. Hey, I'm sorry to wake you. What's going on? I had to take a sleeping pill. Oh, yeah? Well, when's it kicking in? Why? Come on back to bed and I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> mm. I know he cheated on me. I know it. The saddest part is I, I still want to be with him. So this summer I have a second chance. I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep him in my life. You sure that's what you want? That's what I've always wanted. Him. Real unless I write it down. It's not real unless I write it down. I'm gonna do whatever it takes in my life. It's not real unless I write it down first. I know he cheated. I know it. Uh, there's okay. something he's keeping. Hey, hey, what is hey, he keeping? Hey. <gasps> it's okay, Laura. I'm, I'm sorry. It's no, okay. No. You were sleep Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. She looks just like Jane. I know. Oh, by the way, I get it now. That is why you feel like Jane is around. Laurel's the one that you saw at the rally. And you said she's got, what, like a sleep disorder or something? Yeah, but it's more than just that. Look, she knows things she shouldn't know. You remember when Jane used to talk about her journal and she'd say, it's not real unless I write it down first? Thanks. Well, Laurel said that to me the other day, but it wasn't like it was her talking. It, it was Jane talking. Oh, that was you talking. I think that was a line from your book, which I read, by the way. You're so not listening to me. Did you like it? <laughs> yes, I loved it. And I am listening. You took a sleeping pill, okay? Those things give you crazy dreams. Now you're gonna be fine. You just need to go back on your meds, make sure she stays in her room at night, and you're gonna feel better in no time, okay? I promise. Okay. Okay? Oh my God, you gotta go. I'm sorry. I gotta get dressed. The girls are gonna be up in like a second. Right, gotta go.
You know how this place is with all the gossip and everything, and I don't need to be the center of any more talk. One more thing. Way to go, Miss S. Miss S. I sense renewed spirit. He's like, man. Some hot townie. Oh, you love it. I can't gossip about us. I didn't tell them if that's what you're thinking. Oh, no, no. This was all me. Really bad exit strategy. I just want to let you know that this morning I signed up for session with the school shrink. Good. I'm really glad to hear that, Laura. Yeah, whatever's making me do this, I want it to stop. I should be concentrating on school, filling up college applications. Not obsessing on Sam or my parents. Or stressing out so much I end up sleepwalking into your apartment. Yeah, but I kind of freaked out on you, Laurel. Look, between you and me, I get really bad panic attacks. And lately, they've been getting worse. And that's what happened the other night. But regardless, I'm really sorry, because you shouldn't have had to see that. Still, me walking in on you? Your boyfriend must think I'm a freak. No, well, I explained everything to him. Besides, he's not my boyfriend. Definitely not. Miss S, who's Jane? Both times when I woke up, I had this memory that you called me Jane. She was my best friend when I was at school here. You still talk to her? Not anymore. The Cambridge thing's due in a few weeks. I need to get my writing sample. I thought right. you said you'd help me with my story this weekend. I did. I just got baked in the woods with your new friends. Oh. Give it to me. I'll read it. Jane. <sighs> the door in the dark. How very Stephen King. Really, it's the first line of a short story that hooks you in. So today, I'd like to go around the room and have everybody read aloud just their first lines. Um, Sam, why don't you go ahead? OK. Um, <clears throat> mine's called uh, Sugar Shack. March in the Vermont's sugar woods meant nights were as freezing as the days were warm. And while the sap was running, they could be together. Sounds really good, Sam. I'm excited to read the rest. Emery, why don't you go? OK. Mine's called Frenemies. It all started when Cicely St. James got her new Hermes clutch purse. Excellent. Excellent. Laurel? <clears throat> um, it's called The Door in the Dark. Mother always told her never to open the door in the dark. Keep going. But you said only the first line. Keep going. Um, she said you'd never know it was on the other side until it took you by the throat. Class is dismissed. Everybody can go, not you, Laurel. You stay. I'm gonna congratulate Jane. Congratulate? For what? She's going to Cambridge. She won the Douglas spot. <laughs> Talk to you later. You should have told me. You should have. How could you do this to I, me? I was going to tell you I applied. I didn't think I'd get in. And now that I am, my parents really want me to do it. It's a huge deal. You even said so yourself. And now I want to go. I'll be back in May for finals and graduation. <sighs> Mr. Ramsey said it was a story. The door in the dark. The one you helped me with. That's why I won, because of you. What the hell are you trying to pull? Pull what? Jane Halloran wrote The Door in the Dark. When we were at school here, it won her the Cambridge Fellowship. And you're trying to pass it off as your own? For what? Why? To screw with me, mess with the teacher, see how much it you is take my before... story! It's plagiarism, Laurel. Which is oddly a relief, because I thought there was actually something strange going on with you. But now I know. It's just you. <laughs> Look, some of the phrasing is different, but it's the same story. Have you been able to locate a copy of the original? The library keeps all the award-winning papers. I checked. They don't have it. But Ian, you've read it. I can't say it stayed with me over the years. I checked my files, I couldn't find anything. The only thing she's taken for sure is the title. If I recall, it's from a rather unremarkable Robert Frost poem. 
And Laurel McAvoy's future is at stake here. This is about her family, isn't it? I mean, I know that the McAvoys were your biggest supporters when you put your bid in for Headmaster. That's true. The McAvoys have been friends of mine for since before Laurel was born. But you know, if you feel like you need to pay them back or if you owe them something yeah, because they've supported you. It doesn't matter what family she comes from. I still wouldn't expel a child from Douglas without proof that they've done anything wrong. Laurel McAvoy is doing this on purpose. She's playing games. She's trying to... All I'm saying is I don't think any of us realize what this girl is capable of. I, for one, would like to hear her side of the story. It's a good idea. Ask her to come in, please. Laurel, would you come in, please? Laurel, why don't you um, tell us how you got your idea for the story? From a nightmare. I woke up and I started writing. I knew exactly what came next, how to say it. It just flowed. I can't explain it any better than that. Of course you can't. You're a writer. Where do you get the ideas for your stories? Well, they... They just come to me. It seems that creative inspiration is one of life's great mysteries. Not one that we're likely to solve tonight. Come on, Ian. All she'd have to do is Google me, read my book. It's pretty obvious who my dead friend was about. So she found something of Jane's. I just can't figure out why she's doing this. Maybe, maybe she isn't doing anything. How's your new medication? That's really none of your business. You accusing my students of imaginary crimes, raving about a dead girl. Is my business. What is it? Escaping on very thin ice. She wasn't just a dead girl. Ian, you were her favorite teacher. You were her advisor for four years. She dated your son. She was my best friend. My dear, you've got to let this go. I'm trying to, but Laurel won't let me, and I don't know why. I'm going back in there to tell Laurel that Unless there's further proof, she's off the hook. And until this matter is settled, I'll take care of Laurel's affairs. So I'm calling all the way from the States. That is a distance. Look, there's records up from so long ago. It would take a while Look, to I, write them down. I, I'd have to look. Ma'am, I, I know that it was a long, long time ago, but that's sort of why files exist, you know? So that when people like me call, people like you can go and pull them out of some... Courtney Snow? Are you the Courtney Snow who wrote My Dead Friend? Yes, I am that Courtney Snow. When are you coming out with a sequel? Yeah. I'm still working on that second novel. Listen, uh... Just, if you wouldn't mind, you know, taking another look. I'd really appreciate it. You have all my numbers. Look, I'll do my best. Thank you. Bye. Hello? Hello. Is this the Halloran residence? Yes, this is Kay 
Halloran speaking. Hi, this is Courtney Snow calling. You have a lot of nerve. I really need to ask you something about Jane. Well, I was under the impression that you knew everything there was to know about Jane. You wrote your little book, and you made a fortune off our family's tragedy. She was our little girl. So please, do not contact us again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Remember, they're just first drafts. Don't stress out. Laurel, you know that Mr. Ramsey is going to be grading yours. I, I read your book. I also looked at your old yearbook. You're right. I look just like your friend. But no matter what, I'm not her. No, sweetie. I don't think you are her. I think you want to be her. But Miss S, what if it's like what you said? What if there's something strange going on with me? I meant to tell you I spoke with uh, Jim McAvoy. He was stuck in Corsica on business. They've asked me to take Laurel for the holiday, which means you won't have any students to look after, so you can head back to the city if you like. Oh, thanks. I think I'll stay here, get some writing done. Right. You see, my son has come bearing gifts. Hey, Dad. I have to tell him how much we've found upon that sort of thing. You are preaching to the choir. Sorry. What did I tell you about the gossip? Thank you. You're welcome. It's the only way I get your attention. You have an aversion to actual conversation. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You leave me voicemails when you think I'm gonna be gone. I, I, it's because I'm busy. It's finals week. Yes, it is, which means that tomorrow is Thanksgiving break, and I was thinking that uh, you know, maybe we could uh, go away. I'm doing rentals on this inn nearby, and uh, they give me, no, no, don't say no. They give me a few free nights, and you know, I'd make a perfect getaway. I don't know. It's oh, not. I've had on, work come and I'm on. Come on. Wouldn't you like to get out of this place for a while? Act like grown ups? Eat food that isn't served on a plastic tray? That sounds tempting. Give us a shot, huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay, great. However, of course, I have certain conditions. Oh, now we're making demands, are we? No, just one. You gotta promise me now. No talk about Jane. Do it. I'm not going. Done. Done. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Goodbye. I'm going. Goodbye. By the way. What? You look really good. <sighs> Well, well, well. Look who's here. Hey. Wow. You look great. Oh, thanks. No, you look, you look <laughs> hot. I really needed this. Thank you. You're very welcome. I think you needed it, too. Mm. Anyway, what do you want to do tomorrow? We could, uh, let's see, we could go hiking. No, on the hiking. I didn't want to go hiking either. Mm. Um, Let's see, okay, down the highway they got this, like, uh, apple picking thing, but I'm pretty sure it requires us to wear matching sweaters. Mm, kinky. Kinky? Mm, kinky good, kinky bad. Kinky's always good. Kinky is always good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no, for real, what could we do? Um, we could, if you would be so inclined, stay in. We could definitely stay in. Okay. Then we'll stay in. Deal. Oh, ringing. Sorry, one second. Hello? Hello, uh, you were looking for records on a Jean Halloran? Uh, Jean Halloran, yeah. Did you find anything? That's just it. We found the fellowship records, but nobody by that name has ever applied or attended the program here. What? Are you, are, are you sure? Positive. We even came across your application, but there's a note here that it was withdrawn. I know that's not the answer you wanted to hear, but... No, no, that that's okay. Thank you. You've been really helpful. Bye. Hey. You okay? I've been, uh, waiting downstairs for you. 
Jane never went to Cambridge. Oh, come on, Courtney, you promised. If she wasn't there, then where was she? There's this whole piece of her life that we don't even know existed. Maybe this has something to do with why she killed herself. She was at Cambridge. I, I wrote her there, I called her. Did you call her or maybe she called you? I don't remember, I don't know. It's, she probably called me, it was expensive. Look, can we please just go back downstairs, finish our wine and try and have a nice night, okay? Oh, you really just don't get this, do you? You know what, I do get it. I get it. You're trying to avoid us, avoid me. And you know what I think? I, I think you're still that same teenage girl running away every time somebody starts caring about I you. I wasn't running away from you then. I was just trying to do the right thing, just like I'm trying to do now, and you still won't let me. What about the right thing for us? Mrs. Halloran? It's Courtney Snow. I'm sorry it's so late. It's Thanksgiving. If you don't leave, I'm gonna call the police. I know that Jane didn't go to Cambridge. Please, I need to know if that had anything to do with why she did it. I really feel like I need to know or I'll never be able to move on. Somebody you love takes their own life. You never move on. You knew her for a couple of years at your little school. Jane was our baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about tonight. I'm sorry about the book. I'm sorry about everything. <laughs> Never open a door in the dark. No, no, no. Hey, Laurel. She's joking. What the hell are you doing? Get off of her. We were, we were just asleep. Oh my god. Go call 911. Get help. Laurel. 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 Oh my god. Please breathe. Jane, stop it! Stop it! Okay, 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 Laurel. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. You're okay. In and out. I'm not alright. You're gonna kick me out of school for smoking. Sam, you have to tell them what happened. I love her, you know. I didn't think I would. Started because I knew she liked me, knew it would be easy. Then I realized how like we were. You and Laurel? Both our parents have ridiculously high expectations. Mm. It's like we have to constantly prove that we're worthy of being adopted by them. I think, hey, I won the lottery. Ended up with this wealthy family. But you're not blood. You screw up, even a little. They look at you in this way, like, at least you didn't come for me. But I got that about me. She understood. So, don't ask me to go in there and say something that makes me sound crazy.
It was Jane, wasn't it? Three days before we were supposed to graduate from Douglas, Jane Halloran killed herself. I know. It was in your room, Laurel. Oh. She hung herself. You need to tell me. I need you to tell me what happened in that room. What's been happening to you. Or I can't help. I feel this presence sometimes. I know she's there in the room. When she's in that place, she's reliving her death. Stuck in like this endless loop. Sometimes it's scary. But sometimes it's just so powerful. And I know I have to be there for her. She makes me leave sometimes. Just to escape. Sometimes she's strong enough to go on her own, but she's always pulled back. That's why she's angry. Trying to reach out for something to hold on to. She's not angry at you. It's me. No. You were her friend. Not a very good one. And I think she knew it, too. I think that may be why she killed herself. She didn't leave a note, like in your book? No. No note, which is weird, because Jane was a really good writer, you know? She kept a journal every day. Even if nothing interesting happened, she'd write down what she had for lunch. I never found it. But at the end of my dead friend, they find the journal. And in real life, I make a killing off my friend's suicide. So if Jane is mad, it's because she knows what I did. She knows that I built my life on her death. You're wrong. It's not you. Maybe she regrets her decision. It's not regret. When I feel what she felt, it's like being ripped out of this world against her will. If she wanted to die, she wouldn't still be here. I don't know. I do. <gasps> I can feel her. That's how I know Jane misses you and loves you and wants you to be happy. Excuse me, um, we've left word for your parents. It's best you stay in my care tonight. Oh! <laughs> Holy crap, I missed you. <laughs> Let's go catch up. You sure you don't want to go find Brett? Nah, boy can wait. Cambridge was all right, but it should have been you. That's all I thought about. Jane, you don't have to say that. Just I... let me say this. Okay. The way I acted before I left was totally unfair to you and to Brett. Being away put a lot of things in perspective. And I want you to know how sorry I am. You have nothing to apologize for. I wasn't the greatest friend to you. There are things that happened. Forgotten. It's forgotten. And I want to leave Douglas knowing that we're OK. I'm 
sorry. Well, in future, if you have a problem, come to me. Don't miss Snow. She's not equipped to help you at the moment, okay? Yes, Mr. Ramsey. All right. Try to get some sleep. Courtney. Hello? Uh, it's George Halloran. Uh, I had to wait for Kay to fall asleep. You have a right to know why Jane didn't go to England, why she never told you. It may help you to come to peace with her suicide. Thank you for calling me. I'm listening. Jane, help me understand. I need to talk to you. About what? Jane told me to sneak in the back and meet her in the storage room. She's been real strange. It's here. She left me like five notes and a message at my house. She said tonight she had something really important to tell me. She knows. No, she, she doesn't. doesn't. I would know. The thing is, I don't care. I want to spend my last days here with somebody I'm in love with. You can't. If I care about Jane, I have to be honest with her. Even if you don't feel the same. I've lived every moment of my life according to my dad's master plan. To him, that's all that matters. This roadmap to success for the Ramsey men. I totally bought into it. I forgot what it's like to want something for myself. What I want is you and me. I want us to be together. You should never forgive us. I can't think about that right now. If you're trying to apologize, there's a hell of a way to do it. What happened the night Jane died? You know what happened. You didn't go try to find her? No. We fell asleep, remember? You never went and met her. You didn't tell her about us? No. I mean, I should have, yes. I wanted to, but I just never got the chance. So you and Jane didn't have one of your huge fights? Look. Maybe this time it got a little physical. Maybe there was an accident. Whoa, 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 wait a second. What are you saying? I don't want to believe this, Brett, but it's the only explanation. Maybe you felt trapped. And why would I feel trapped? Because of the baby. What baby? What the hell are you talking about? Your baby, Brett. The one Jane had instead of going to England, your daughter. Mr. Ramsey says if I tell Brett, we'll all have to be in trouble, that the adopted parents will sue us for fraud. But I have to do the right thing. Brett needs to know he has a daughter named Laurel. <gasps> then he can be a part of her life. No one ever told me. My father never told me. God. I can't believe she went through that alone. I would have stayed with her. 
I would have helped her. And I never, I never would have hurt her. Should have gotten rid of that a long time ago. That's all she left behind. not exactly true. Look, Jane's parents think that it was postpartum depression, but I don't think she killed herself. But well, why? Because Jane told you? I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. You don't know me either. You're my grandfather. Jane came to me for help, not my son me. I fixed everything. Brett would never know. So she could still be with him. And he would never resent her. Her parents got what they wanted. A nice, neat, private adoption. A child of good breeding. And I knew that one day you would be here with me at Douglas. What was it worth to you? What did my parents do? I did this for my son. Your dad set the whole thing up, Brett. They thought you consented. I never consented to anything. It's amazing the things a father will do for a son. Things you'll never appreciate. You did this for yourself. For your career. That's why Jane showed this to me. You were there that night. You took Jane's journal so no one would know. Do you have any idea what your parents would have done if they had had to give you back? If they were dragged through the courts? I know what they're like. I have an idea. You can understand why you have to give that back. I know it was Courtney Snow who put you up to this. It was Jane. Jane. I was so fond of her. She was going to scream. to keep her quiet. Jane at that rally, I think she was trying to show me how she died, and it was violent. Suicide is violent. No, listen, all of this is happening for a reason. I think it's happening so we can try to fix our mistakes. But we can't change what happened, what we've done. Being with you again was not a mistake to me.
needs to know he has a daughter named Laura. I think I'd like to stay here forever. But we each have someplace else we need to be, don't we? Courtney, come on. It's okay, she's coming too. We got her. Hey, you okay? Where's the It's all right, it's all right. Where's she's right here. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Right. I can't begin to explain what happened in there. I have no idea what was real and what was It happened. Jane happened. My little Faith. Okay. He's a good guy, you know? I think he just might be the love of my life. I'd like to meet him. Officially, I mean. Okay. Laurel. Laurel. Spread. You look so much like your mother. <laughs> 